So the back page of the Irish Independent this morning is the new Kerry manager uh, and who might be Morris Fitzgerald in the mix for a Kerry job as race hots up, writes Colm Keyes. Decision on candidate to replace Fitzmaurice imminent after county board holds interviews. You've also got McElroy eager to embrace American target on his back and United Cup exit adds to Mourinho woe after Pogba Rift. You've also got a great picture there of Ryan Giggs and Roy Keane at the testimonial for Liam Miller yesterday. Uh, but that big story there on the back page of the Irish Independent that Morris Fitz is in the mix for the Kerry job. Uh, it's something that, uh, like, the, the rumour mill is always in full flow whenever there's a, 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 like a, an absent managerial position. And this is certainly something that I've heard from very good sources, actually, that Morris Fitzgerald is potentially the front runner uh, to be the next carry manager which I think would have surprised a lot of people like Peter Keane had been backed into such a favourite now where I think the markets were actually taken down for the next Kerry job and I think uh, Peter Keane would have been seen as a, a very very good option now Morris Fitzgerald has kind of come into the mix and it's kind of making us all reevaluate uh, his role with Emmett Fitzmaurice over the last couple of years whether or not he's in the right position and it is just your classic selector stepping up to take to the, to the mantle and I honestly think that the initial discussion around Fitzgerald, if he gets this job, will be, well, great players don't always make great managers. And the fact that he's such a legend will actually probably leave him, it will, will create more of a target on his back when it comes to the potential criticism because every carry manager ultimately gets criticism, which I think might be a little bit unfair. Yeah. Um, it can be hard to gauge where, what level he's been at. Like, look, I'm, I'm sure he's held in seriously high regard within the squad themselves. Um, and I'm sure the players probably had a bit of a voice in, in who they wanted to take over. He's worked under Fitzmaurice for, for a couple of years, uh, but he, I think he's probably his own man as well. You know, he's, he is a principal of a school in, in South Kerry as well. You know, he's used to being in charge. That mm. makes a bit of a difference. And I'm sure he'll bring his own stamp to it. It's, it's an exciting job for him to take on. Yeah. Because it's, it's not a here and now project. It's, it's developing to try and win a sustained amount of All-Irelands in the next maybe three or four years and after that trying to dominate because they are bringing through a level of talent that the rest of the counties aren't at the moment. Yeah, it's true. It's like you do wonder if this is just the best template to do that maybe we overrate the importance of being, uh, say, an underage manager at county level. Of course, you get to know the players and in this particular role, it's important. Yeah, it's a completely different ball game. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't have to wor worry about players' lives as much when uh, it's younger. I mean, bar school um, and exams, they're your two biggest hindrances. You don't have a lot of, um, you don't have families, you don't have careers. There's, there's a lot more going on with, with, with older, older players. And, you know, trying to get the buy-in from older players can actually be a lot tougher as well. Mm. So there, it is, while, while underage management is, is very good and it's a great basis to go on to, to manage some, some older teams, it, it definitely isn't the same thing, I don't think. No, I, I don't think so. But that's not to say that Peter Keane still isn't no, a great candidate. I'm and he, he's still probably very much in the mix. Like Colin Keyes here is saying that a decision has not been made. Like when it comes to the rumours that you hear around these things, yeah. or you hear, signs you delivered, it's done, Morris Fitzgerald is the carry manager, which is... Well, you've t you're probably talking about two of the biggest uh, rumour mill jobs between yeah. the Kerry football job and the Tip Harlan job over the last couple of weeks. So. Exactly. That, but at least if they managed to nail down the Tip one. Like, yeah. I, you do wonder, like, just taking that into account then about the idea that being a se senior county manager is probably the most important experience you can have, or being involved at a camp, that your own Liam Kearns didn't actually get more of a link to this carry job. Um, yeah, I, I, he was probably unlucky, um, but I don't think within Kerry uh, they seem to promote from within. It's kind of like the All Blacks down there, <laughs> isn't it? I uh, don't think they're coming in for Joe Smith anytime soon. You think so. that as soon as he left the tents, that was it for, for the no, time being? No, it just, it just seems, that seems to be the way that it's done down there. I think it, it's promoted, and I suppose it fosters people who have an ambition to take the Kerry job to stay you know, and get a grounding within the underage structures and move up like Peter Keane has, like uh, Fitzgerald has, Fitzmaurice, um, Jack O'Connor is currently doing it as well. And that's just the way it is. We're obviously delighted in Tipperary that, uh, <laughs> that he was, that he, he, he hasn't or, or wasn't uh, maybe, maybe interviewed for, for the role. It's, it's, it's great for us, but um, I'm, sure, I'm sure he was, if, if they were thinking of a change of structure, I'm sure he'd be on their mind. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he would be. Uh, we'll move on to the Irish Times this morning. They're going with a two-page spread at the front of their sports section on the Ryder Cup. 
Woods looking to bring winning momentum to Team USA, says Philip Reid, and focus turns quickly to the speed of the greens. We're going to get into our proper preview tomorrow morning here on OTB AM. Nathan and Joe have made a trip to Paris, where it's on at La Golf Nationale this weekend. It's exciting times. Like I mean, it's it's great that it is a Ryder Cup year because ordinarily the Tour Championship would have happened last year, and then suddenly you may as well be reading uh, like tournament previews for the Masters already at this point. But thank God we have just like one more week of like top level golf that everybody is going to be watching at yeah. Rolling Tiger. And, and and I mean, the scenes on Sunday evening were just incredible. Mm. You know, it, golf golf has always been a popular sport, but golf with Tiger is like, it's a different ball game altogether. And, you know, I mean, the hype going around Paris next week or this weekend will be just incredible with him playing. And, you know, you're, there's going to be such a spotlight on, on the matches that he's involved in. So, uh, like, yeah. Would you, would you have, uh, like, been at your TV on a Sunday night when Tiger was in his real pomp watching those majors, because I certainly wasn't. I certainly got into the Tiger hype a little bit late in his career, as in the first time that I was a real intense watching it from Thursday through to Sunday fan was probably around Torrey Pines in 2009, yeah. and that was, of course, the last major that Tiger won. So there's certainly an element of me that's like, God, I wish I, wish I was just there. That, that little bit more, a little bit older to actually have a little bit more of Tiger in his pomp and watching him time and time again doing what he did, that I'm just so thankful that he is back. Yeah, it was probably a bit, it was probably a bit too early for me as well. Um, you just don't appreciate it as much until, you know, you, you grasp the level of competition that he's playing against and how much he's had to go through. So yeah, it's 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 great to maybe you know get your own uh, experience of Tiger Woods now for for the next while. Um, but it, I think the it will be an incredible incredible day if he ever wins another major. Yeah, and you wouldn't bet against it. Like I mean, he. I'd bet Mick, on it. Mickelson came out during the week and said that he's hitting the ball better than he's ever seen it. So, mm. I mean. Well, and I'm sure he knows him pretty well. The the old Mickelson versus Tiger matchup now is just kind of looking like a write off. It's like it, it used to be two old men, and now it looks like one old man. I don't want to do Phil Mickelson too much of a disservice, <laughs> and one fellow who's back playing some of his best golf. Yeah, or Mickel not, okay, Mickelson not some of his best golf, but close to uh, the best golf in the world right now. Yeah, oh yeah. Handy, you go around for 18, hole, 18 holes of golf for 9 million quid. I think he beat him by 24 strokes, was it? At the, did Phil finish yeah. like 12 over or something last was, weekend? Yeah, he was last, I think, wasn't he? So, so uh, Phil is making a killing off that, is, is what I would suggest. Uh, the Irish Examiner sports section this morning is filled with gratitude. Miller family expressed their heartfelt thanks to Packed Park. Great uh, pull out supplement as well in the Irish Examiner souvenir uh, for anybody who wants it on the Lee Miller testimonial yesterday. A brilliant event, and it's, it's always funny when it comes to these testimonials, particularly given some of the, some of the talent on show yesterday. Just the, the competitive nature that's just lying a little bit below the surface, and not even on the pitch, even listening to Keith Andrews yesterday on, on co commentary for Virgin Media Sport when he was talking about, well, he was, he was properly analysing the game. He was as if this was uh, a Champions League match involving Manchester United in Old Trafford. He commentated as such, and it, 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 like he really watched it as a real competitive game of football, which I think most people there were actually taking it that seriously. Yeah, um, I suppose for everyone stepping on the field, it was a competitive game of football, mm. though. I think Roy Keane was seeing barking orders at a few <laughs> people. So, um, yeah, look, it was a, f it, it is a fantastic event and and a very well run, and it shows you that it, the regard that Liam Miller was held in that the, for the standard of players that actually came over and and put their talents on show and. You know, it, it looks like it to have been a, a resounding success. Yeah, we can see David Ford on screen there, uh, smiling at Roy before he took a penalty that was ultimately saved. Kino afterwards said, well, sure, David Ford had an advantage because we used to train together and he used to... I, I used to run a few things by him when it came to penalties and training and all that sort of stuff, so he got his excuses in. De Dennis Irwin didn't make any mistakes, no. did he? <laughs> I don't think anyone would have bet against him either. Absolutely not. Ro Robbie Keane's goal, like, that was... When you talk about, like, a, a competitive edge under the surface where well, Robbie Keane was making no qualms about his competitive edge yesterday. Really, like a proper game face on. There is Dennis Irwin after he scored his penalty yesterday. Lewis Sahar's goal was, it was probably the goal of the match and yeah. he, like I think everybody was saying afterwards that he's in fantastic shape and all that sort of stuff. He still looked a little bit gassed after he uh, put it into the back of the net. His celebration was just kind of like, right, let me take a few deep breaths here and walk yeah. back to the halfway line. Because everybody was just talking, uh, particularly people who aren't from Ireland who were, who were playing yesterday, just talking about the, the sheer size of the Parky Creeve pitch, which yeah. didn't even take into account. No, I think there was a huge amount of space behind the goals, which uh, yeah. which really comes to fore. It kind of reminds you of when Ireland used to play in Crow Park, and <laughs> there was uh, just space everywhere. It was the ball wouldn't come back into play for about ten minutes after it went over the <laughs> sideline. It's uh, the Times Ireland edition this morning goes with uh, the same story. United they stand. 
for a lost comrade. There is Roy Keane wearing the captain's armband in the Manchester United jersey. Great sight to see once again. Uh, Rice will need time to decide, so naturally this was something that was discussed yesterday when you had the likes of Martin and Neil and Roy Keane doing the rounds. So Gary Doyle saying that despite reports that Ken Rice is edging towards England rather than Ireland as he continues to deliberate over his international future, it appears as though no decision is imminent. Now John O'Shea uh, was speaking yesterday, he says that we need to give him the time to make up his own mind and hopefully he will pick Ireland. Now, like whether or not that suggests that, like you'd imagine with a lot of these ex-players, when it comes to us being in the rumour mill for the GEA stories, they would be in the rumour mill when it comes to Declan Rice, you'd suspect. And for him to say maybe that's give him a little bit more time and hopefully he'll choose Ireland, yeah. suggests to me that either A, he hasn't heard anything confirming that, Eng that Declan Rice is going to choose England, um, or B, that there is actually still a situation here that's very much in limbo. Granted, I know I'm just trying to be very, very hopeful here because I, I think yeah. we're desperate for Rice to come back and play for us. I think the biggest issue at the moment is he's playing so well. Yeah. Um, he was very, very, good, very, well. very, very, very good against Chelsea, and there seems to be an agenda in the in the British media as well to highlight that, as you're saying. Um, Do you think it is an agenda? Do you think that they are thinking to themselves? No, I think they actually are. Just, yeah. but like, it, it, there's a definitely uh, all of the all of the major players in the media over there are, you know, very much complimentary of of how well he's been playing. He was. And I think he's shown a tactical flexibility now. I mean, he started at centre back last season. He's now playing as a sitting midfielder, um, and really, you know, has been the main catalyst for West Ham. Or have been playing so well over the last couple of weeks. He's he's given the rest of the players the license to get forward while he's just sitting there and making sure that they're not you know making any mistakes at the back. I think it's it's a big decision. It's it's tough because I mean. I think I saw I saw an article basically where if you compare him to Harry Maguire, you know, and Harry Maguire came from a like he he's arguably a much better player at nineteen than Harry Maguire was, and Harry Maguire was being talked about as a seventy million pound player, which means a ten or fifteen million signing bonus when you sign. Whereas I don't think there's any players in Ireland that are being talked about as yeah. a seventy million pound player. But the Harry Maguire thing is constantly being held up as this example, and yeah. you do wonder if. Say if England hadn't had the World Cup they had, if they got knocked out at the last 16 stage, we wouldn't be talking about Harry Maguire as a £70 million player, and we certainly wouldn't be talking about England as this really attractive proposition from an international perspective. In fact, we'd probably be in the usual state of kind of slagging off England, to be yeah. honest with you, and maybe it wouldn't have come to this. Granted, I know everything I've said there is just one huge leap, yeah. but it's all part of the discourse here. And like this, the really annoying thing, and I know I've said this before, is that when you look at Declan Rice at the weekend and you look at, say, the four players around him, so the two midfielders in front of him and the two centre halves behind him, like you've got Diop and Balbuena behind him, I would argue that Kieran Clark and Shane Duffy yeah. is better than that partnership. Yeah. And in front of him, Mark Noble and Pedro Obiang, I would argue that Jeff Hendrick, if he gets a form back, and A, another in the Ireland midfield, might be some bit as good as Noble and Obiang. Basically, Declan Rice for West Ham, what we're seeing, he would perhaps be even better in an Ireland jersey were Martin O'Neill to play him in that uh, exact role. So that's really, really frustrating. Like, when you talk about the agenda, we often say tongue-in-cheek here how match of the day has suddenly highlighted Declan Rice yeah, a lot I do, over I do think, international break. I do think England are very wary at the moment. Yeah. Because they've lost Zaha to, to Ivory Coast because he didn't get in as an international when he was young. Yeah. And he chose to change allegiances. And I think at the moment they're starting to recognise that there's a whole host of 19, 20-year-olds here that are dual nationality, a lot of them, and we don't want in five years' time to be going, why didn't we just play mm. them once? Yeah. So that's why I think they're, they're really starting to look at guys who are you know, maybe playing week in, week out in, in the Premier League and, and could definitely make an impact at international level. Yeah, definitely. Uh, back page of the Racing Post this morning is level best, cup rivals hard to separate in Anfield clash. I don't think we're going to see two overly strong sides from Liverpool or Chelsea this evening. It could be a decent opportunity for Chelsea to actually win a trophy here if we are to believe that they're not going to challenge for the title. I think people are getting a little bit ahead of themselves when they're writing Chelsea out of the title race. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool, though, uh, like obviously, I think you're pretty excited at this point that there is going to be a title race that Liverpool are going to be involved in this year. The question is, if you had to pick one this year, the Champions League or, or the Premier League, which do you choose? I think most Liverpool fans would say, finally get that Premier League. Yeah, I think so. Um the memories that that Liverpool fans may would make on on a Champions League jersey or our Champions League journey are unrivaled. But I think everyone wants a Premier League just to take the pressure off. Yeah, you know, because every year it's one year more, and it just becomes so tough. I think I think Liverpool will go quite strong tonight. Yeah, um, I think you'll you'll see perhaps one of the front three. Um, I think Gomez will start. I, the two full backs will change, and I think Allison. 
although he said Mignolet will start. So he's been the biggest change for me, Alisson, because what he's allowing the defence to do is push five yards further up the field. Because mm. Van Dijk and Gomez don't have an eye over the shoulder to see where Mignolet is and to be trying to cover that space. How many times do you see like where Liverpool are playing against someone, they win the ball back back in their own half and they're knocking it forward and Van Dijk and Gomez are just taking the ball back and it's relentless. And I think that's the biggest change. People will say that he's a brilliant shot stopper, but he's also just give that whole, gave that whole back line a whole new lease of life and, and a brilliant confidence to go and become, you know, attacking an attacking back line. Yeah. Um, I mean, the two full-backs have been brilliant all year. And it's, it's a... An unbelievably exciting time to be a Liverpool fan. Yeah, definitely. Like, if you've got a goalkeeper that allows Liverpool to push five yards further up, yeah. that's like that's like a, a huge difference to a team like Liverpool because they're so bloody good without the ball and their pressing game is yeah. just intensified. I, I do, yeah, and it means that they're not as stretched at all between you know their front line and their back four. And I think the, one of the more pleasing aspects about this year has been the fact that it's been the players who we consider to be unheralded who have been our best players all year. Mm. Milner, Wijnaldum, the two full-backs who, you know, have been getting a lot of plaudits, but you wouldn't put them in the top five Liverpool players. No. Um, and that, that's, that's a huge thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's rattle through the rest of the papers then. United Crisis is the back of the Irish Daily Mail this morning. Pogba stripped of captaincy as Derby shock Jose's flop. We'll get Daniel Harris's take on that in a few moments, but you've got the rest of the papers, Mike. Yeah, um, the back of the Herald has O'Shea in Rice Hope, which we've discussed already. Pogba, Captain Snob as... United paid a penalty and uh, John Aldridge has an excuse of saying that Klopp can't ignore the Cups, so uh, <laughs> we'll see if he does. Yeah, yeah. Um, the back of the Daily Star today is no way Jose as, as Derby, Derby County or after dumping United out of the Cup. I see Harry Wilson there giving it the Torres five times <laughs> uh, celebration. It, what a at goal. All, at all, it was an incredible strike of a ball. Um, Roberto Carlos. Oh, well, he's with the right. But. I mean, Romero has no chance. Yeah. Because he's already moved to his left hand side because that's where the ball is going and suddenly it just takes off. Um, yeah, it's as a Liverpool man scoring in, uh, in Old Trafford is always a sweet one and his celebration was just cherry on top. I Absolutely. Think. It was. Yeah. <laughs> the back of the, the mirror today, uh, Pog Bar Mourinho gets tough with Old Trafford record signing and tells him you'll never be the captain again. Uh, Tigers on a ride on on a ticket to Ryder and uh, stars out to honour tragic Liam. So pretty much the same. Um, the back of the Daily Telegraph shows Mourinho with his head in his hands. United turmoil, um, which we'll discuss soon enough. And uh, the back of the... UK independent, I think it is. Uh, United in crisis, Pogba punished before Rams raid Old Trafford. Yeah, nice one.